Hey guys, my name is Boris, I'm a physician assistant, and I've got a quick patient story today that I think you're really gonna get a kick out of because it's hilarious, but it's also very powerful, and it demonstrates the importance of the HPI, the history of present illness. So there's this thing in medicine today called CYA, cover your A, uh, which basically says that you should have as many objective findings as possible to prove that it's nothing that's life-threatening or dangerous that's causing the patient's complaints. So sometimes we do unnecessary testing that's expensive, that's sometimes even invasive uh, with imaging. You know, they're, we're subjecting the patient to radiation just to CYA, just to cover our butts, to make sure we didn't miss anything, even if it's extremely unlikely. And unfortunately, with that kind of a culture in medicine, one thing that gets kind of put by the wayside is old school medicine, which is history, which is physical exam. I've even heard providers say something like, and this is a quote, the physical exam is just a dance. And then they totally ignore it and totally don't even do a physical exam because they want to just order imaging or they want to do whatever. And sometimes you already know, based on the presentation, based on the complaint, based on the vital signs of whatever, that you are going to order something. Maybe you're going to order it before doing the physical exam, but you should always still do the basics. Ask a detailed history, ask a detailed review of systems, and do a detailed physical exam, at least focused on whatever area the patient has a complaint on. Uh, so that should be just kind of common knowledge, and that's how we're trained in school, but you know, as we're in a hurry more and more, that kind of goes by the wayside, like I said. So without further ado, what's the story? So I work in urgent care medicine, where people usually come in with just one complaint, sometimes more, but generally it's just one main complaint. They're there, they want me to fix that one problem, the end. Now in medicine, of course, you have to take all of their medical history, all of their surgical history, the medications they're on, their age, their demographics, you have to take all of that into account, even for something as simple as like an earache or a sore throat or a cough or, you know, wheezing or whatever, you have to take all of that into account. So in this case, I had an 80 year old gentleman whose complaint was I've had the poops for six months. And so I'm sitting there in urgent care and I see this complaint come across the screen on my screen and I go like, first things first, this is not an urgent care patient. This guy's medically complicated. He's 80 years old. Like this is not really appropriate for an urgent care where I don't even have a detailed history on him. I don't have his full medication list. Of course he doesn't know it. Like it's just, this is not an urgent care patient, but these guys do come in from time to time and I still have to try to help them, right? I wanna to try to help them. That's why I'm in medicine, I wanna help. And so this guy comes in 80 years old on Eliquis on a bunch of different medications medically complicated, you know, he's had a long life full of medical issues, of course, and now he's had the poops for six months and they're not going away. And so my first instinct is like, right? It's like, what am I supposed to do for this poor guy? I know he's suffering, but what am I supposed to do in urgent care? He doesn't really qualify for loperamide. I don't want to, he probably has heart problems. I'm looking, I'm trying to see, but either way, I'm not putting an 80 year old guy on loperamide. And so all I really got for this guy is brat diet, right? Just not even examining him, not even looking at him, just like that's all I could tell him. And I'm like dreading going into this patient interaction because I know I can't really do anything for him. And so like I'm dreading it, I'm kind of putting it off and finally I go in there. I talked to the guy, like I reviewed his chart. I knew he was medically complicated, but I didn't really get a detailed review because it's just not always comprehensive what I have access to. And so I go in there, I'm talking to him. And I kind of even lead with like, dude, look, you know, you need like a gastroenterologist, you need probably a colonoscopy, you need like to be worked up by a stomach doctor for something like this chronic issue that you're having. I don't really know what I can do for you in urgent care, probably nothing. And he goes, yeah, I know, but I was just kind of tired of it and it's not getting worse. But today I just decided I'm tired of it and I just wanted to see someone. And I'm like, this poor guy, like he, and also he's 80. So the check-in process on the iPad is very difficult for him. So he spent like an hour waiting, checking in, all that stupid stuff just for me to be able to tell him, like, I can't really do nothing for you. And so I like, I feel terrible and I want to help this guy. So I'm asking all these questions, basically just to, one, to satisfy myself and for him to like, feel like I actually gave a crap and no pun intended, gave a crap about him and actually did something for him. Uh, and so I'm just asking and digging and digging further into his history as much as possible. And with a guy who's 80, that's tough. Uh, but finally, long story short, he told me this has been going on for about six months. And my favorite thing to ask when something that's kind of mysterious is happening, like why is this symptom happening, especially consistently, is what changed in your life? What happened in your life just prior to the onset of symptoms? So the day before, even a few weeks before, what was different? Did you travel to a different country? Did you change your diet? Did you go to a barbecue and leave the potato salad in the trunk of the car for six months or six hours? Sorry, six hours. If you left it in there for six months, just anyway. Okay, so... 
did anything happen that you could possibly think of just prior to starting these symptoms? And he thought, and he's like, no. And then later in the interaction, when I'm talking about his surgeries, he goes, well, yeah, I got my gallbladder out. I'm like, okay, yeah, you got your gallbladder out probably 20 years ago, right? And he's like, no, about like six to eight months ago. And then the light bulb goes off in my head and I almost wanted to be like, dude, are you not putting two and two together that your gallbladder got taken out just before you started having loose stools on a daily basis? But I'm not gonna like, you know, I'm not gonna be condescending to the guy because he's not trained medically. He doesn't understand that his poops are coming from the fact that he is still eating a ton of cheese every single day, lots of greasy food, and he doesn't have a gallbladder, which is literally there to process greasy food. So he's not putting two and two together, but I am. Long story short, I know this video is already longer than it should because I'm rambling, but long story short, basically we figured out that it was the fact that he is post, uh, status post cholecystectomy, he doesn't have a gallbladder, he continues to eat cheese, that's one of his staples, lots and lots of greasy food that he's just not able to handle, so it goes right through him, he's having these loose greasy stools, sorry it's gross, but this is a medical channel, um, these loose greasy stools three or four times a day, no blood, no pain, nothing really, no, not dizzy, no, no, nothing scary, uh, should still get worked out by a gastroenterologist, but I basically told him, have a lower fat diet, avoid cheese, use it sparingly, or just stick to like one or two times a day, or sorry, one or two times a week with your cheese and try to avoid it for a couple of weeks and see if things get better. That being said, also talk to your primary doctor and get a referral to gastroenterology because they should work you up further. This is not necessarily normal, uh, but just try this for me. And he's like, huh, that actually makes sense. So I'm not exactly certain if that's what was causing his symptoms, but it makes sense to me. And if it is just that simple, then I was actually able to help this guy just by taking a very detailed history and not ignoring things, leaving no stone unturned just to basically appease him and myself to make it look like and make it feel like I gave him kind of, you know, his time and money's worth. But what ended up happening is I ended up taking a very, very detailed history, more than I normally would in urgent care. And we were actually able to get to the root of his problem and hopefully even help him. So the point of this entire long story is the importance of basic medicine, physical exam, you never know what you're gonna find. I have found weird stuff on someone that complained with like belly pain and I ended up listening to their heart and I'm like, bro, you got a diastolic murmur. This needs to be evaluated like pronto. And he's like, oh, I didn't even know. No one ever told me I have a murmur. Well, yeah, go get evaluated. You probably have a, you know, some sort of a valvular, valvular disorder or something that probably needs to be diagnosed and possibly repaired sooner rather than later. So the basic physical exam, the basic and comprehensive history, you never know what you're gonna find and how much you can actually do without diagnostic testing. It's really, really cool.